Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today, we've got another episode of This Is Not A Top 10. This is a monster video. Uh, it's on a note, lavender, which is a very important note in masculine perfumery. Uh, it's prevalent throughout many, many fragrances. Uh, this is gonna be a very long video, and if you've been following my channel, you know that I did a video, This Is Not A Top 10, Fougere. Now, here's the thing. All Fougeres have lavender in them, but not all lavender fragrances are fougeres, eh? So, there are going to be some in here that you probably saw on the This Is Not A Top 10 fougere list. There will be some that you did not see on the list. There will be some cheapies. There's gonna be some niche fragrances. As usual, this is going to be just a cross section of my collection. And um, these videos basically gave me a way or a reason to talk about a lot of fragrances with you guys. That's what this is about talking about a lot of fragrances, uh, connections, notes, you know, um, categories, all that stuff. Hopefully this helps get you in that mindset. Hopefully you enjoy listening to me ramble about these because that's one of the things I really enjoy doing it. I hope it helps broaden your scope, put stuff on your watch list, help you understand where things came from, that kind of stuff. But before we get into it, this is going to be a long video as usual. So I hope you're sitting down, hope you got your seatbelt on. We are gonna do scent of the day. Today's a very special day, actually. It's September 1st. It's the day that Rich Mitch basically set a trend. His trend is that on every March 1st, he wears green Irish tweed to mark the beginning of spring. And on every September 1st, he wears tobacco oud um, by Tom Ford to mark the end of summer. And so, in standing with my brother from across the pond, um, I decided to wear tobacco oud today. And it was a, it was rainy today in Texas. It was in the 80s, so it wasn't super hot. It was absolutely stunning at work. I love tobacco oud. It's thick. It's heavy. Uh, it's resinous. Rumor is it's discontinued. I might grab a bottle. Uh, but it's got tobacco oud, sandalwood, and patchouli. Uh, and, um, Rich Mitch said that it smells a lot like Amber Absolute. Uh, you know, Amber Absolute smells a lot like tobacco oud without the tobacco or the oud. Now, I've never smelled Am Amber Absolute, but I can see what he could mean by that because there is this ambery, resinous base. You know, you could bunch together Sahara Noir, Amber Absolute, and tobacco oud probably, but I would love to have a bottle of this. Maybe I'll try to pick up a bottle, but it's just getting... Tom Ford's prices are insane. Um, anyways, let's jump into this. This is going to be a long video, like I said, so let's get going. First, we're going to do some decants as usual. And the first decant we're going to do is a Roja Dove. And this is called Herod's Porom. Now, this was kind enough to be sent to me by D.L. Qualia. And as you can see, I completely drained it wearing it. I reviewed this. Um, I talked about it on my channel. If you go to my playlist and pull up Roja Dove, you can view the Herod's Pour Homme. And that fragrance has this lavender citrus uh, Litsea Kubiba note. And Litsea Kubiba is a flower that smells like citrus. And so it extends that citrus opening. Very pleasant and posh. I mean, if you were an executive and you wanted something that just brought everyone close to you, that's a great fragrance. But I would never pay what they're asking. It's criminal uh, what they're asking for Herod's Pour Homme, uh, but it is a nice fragrance. Okay, next we're going to go to the house of Maitre Parfumé Gantier, and this is Ombre Presso. So glad to have a 10 ml decant of this because I really like this amber fragrance. If I, if I didn't outwardly profess my love for um, Ombre Sultan so much, and, and I just bought a backup of that, and I'm so happy to have a backup. I feel like I can wear it at will now, because um, those Sir Zutan bottles are only 50 mils. But um, this is this oriental spicy amber fragrance with lavender and myrtle in the top. There's also nutmeg, kumarin, ambergris. It's a high-class niche amber, and it's very well done. Full bottle worthy, although I don't think I'll get one just because of the way my collection fell. Next, we're going to do a Creed, and I wore this yesterday as my scent of the day, and I was very disappointed. This is a gray cap Creed, so back when they used to do eau de toilettes, I don't know who made this. I seriously doubt this was Pierre Bourdon. It's probably some intern that, you know, Olivier Creed um, conned out of the fragrance, but uh, this is Royal Scottish Lavender. Very disappointing, probably the worst gray cap fragrance um, it's lavender and neroli. 
is basically what it is with sandalwood. It almost gives you that, uh, you know, like uh, cheap uh, washing soap, you know, like you, you threw your clothes in the washer and you didn't have any brand tied. So all you had was the store off brand, you know, cheap dishwashing soap or uh, um, laundry soap. That's what you get. It's very bad. I don't like it at all. I think it's cheap. The ingredients don't smell high quality. I read some comments, people saying, oh, it smells high quality. Bullshit. Uh, it smells cheap and, um, you know, it, it smells like an intern did it who, you know, had an idea that was unfinished and then Olivier Creed stole it and just put it out as a fragrance and said it came out in 1856. Insanity. But, excuse me, whilst I hydrate. <sighs> Insane. 1856. All of these um, sites like Parfumo need to go in there and change that. That is a um, that is a slap in the face to anyone who knows what's going on with the House of Creed now that, uh, you know, Gabe Oppenheim released that book. Okay, next we're going to do um, a Mancera, a house that I really don't like. Uh, I only own one of their fragrances and I put it on the I hate list, but... I'm holding on to it because it's a vintage screw cap, not a uh, um, not a magnetic cap. Maybe someone will pay me a thousand dollars for a vintage bottle of Cedrap Boise one day. But this is a decant, and it's a 15 mil decant called Saharan Saharian Wind. And um, this fragrance is not bad. Okay, I will preface it. I'll say it's a it's a not bad fragrance. Okay. Um, it, it's more to my liking than Cedrat Boise because this has this leather note and you guys know I'm a sucker for leather. I just got some on my nose. Um, so yes, I'm a sucker for leather. Um, and this has this leathery tobacco with lavender, cypress, patchouli, vanilla. It's got that sharp, heavy, you know, uh, you know how Mancera's notes are all like punch you in the face, the fragrance lasts 48 days on your skin? It has that, um, but in a synthetic kind of way. But I still like it because it's leather and tobacco, and I'm a sucker for those notes. Okay, next we're going to do a, a, a small decant Rich Mitch sent me. Thank you very much for this, Rich, by the way. Uh, this is Eau Noir, and I decided to do a video on Eau Noir. So I actually have a video up on it if you go to my playlist, click on Dior, you'll see it, or just search Eau Noir. But this is a Francis Kirk John from 2004, uh, back when the juice was green. Now it's no longer green. He removed the colorant now that he re-released it. This is white thyme, clary sage, lavender, cedar, vanilla, licorice, immortal. Um, and it is a good fragrance. This is a very good fragrance. I really enjoy it. Uh, it's much more spicy than something like Sunshine Man. Actually, let's talk about Sunshine Man now because they're linked to me. So, Sunshine Man uh, is an amouage that came out in 2015, a decade plus after Eau Noir came out. And I think it's inspired by Eau Noir. Um, Sunshine Man is a Pierre Nagrin and Fabrice Pellegrin creation. And this is lavender, orange brandy, Immortel, that Immortel note I was just saying, Clary Sage, Tonka, Vanilla, and Cedarwood. This is a perfected version of Eau Noir, to my nose. So I'll never buy a bottle of Eau Noir because I much more prefer wearing Sunshine Man. This is a 10 out of 10. If I gave ratings, um, I, you know, I always thought 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10 is tough because it's not enough points, right? Um, I think you need to go like something like a hundred points. So you could put a 94, an 88, a 97, you know, um, that's my feeling. But if I, I don't rate fragrances, but if I did rate them out of a hundred, this would be 95 plus for me. I mean, this would be in the very top quartile. I absolutely love Sunshine Man. Um, oh, it's so good. You know, it's just, it, it literally is like it is like going to stand out in the sun it just puts a smile on your face it does for me anyways um okay next we're going to talk about another fragrance i actually did a video on long ago one of my old videos early impression this is sent to me by anuj thank you anuj of enchante of course you all know anuj i have another haul from him coming 
a news at EnchantePerfumes.com. Uh, has amazing vintage fragrances. You can go check his stuff out. But this is Burberry's for men. Burberry's for men from the uh, 80s. I believe 1980 this came out. But it was re-released in 92 with the cap. So the cap and the sprayer were originally off-center in the 80s version. They re-released it in 92 with the cap in the middle. And I think a different uh, distributor marketed it. Uh, a company called Royal Brands. And um, Royal Brands, of course, ended up discontinuing this. This is long gone. This is the best Burberry fragrance ever created, by the way, for men, in my opinion. And I like Burberry London and all that stuff. But this is just, I mean, it's the best. Um, I, I don't have a bottle because bottle prices are exorbitant. But I would love to. But there's this amazing lavender tarragon mint combo opening. And you guys know I love tarragon as a note. And it dries down into this beautiful, spicy, woody, animalic 80s fragrance with civet and leather. All the stuff I love is here. So would I love a bottle? Sure, but they are impossible to find. Um, at least at a decent price without getting, you know, without getting just taken to the cleaners. Now, Burberry has another scent that people don't talk about anymore. It came out in the 90s uh, and it's called Burberry for Men. And this basically, look at my bottle, it has stuff all in it from, you know, however long ago I bought this. Um, and so Burberry's for Men is a, um, Burberry's for Men is a fragrance that was uh, basically put together by a house called Creations Aromatique, okay? And Creations Aromatique um, takes credit for this. And I think this is a very easy to wear, almost like clubbing. You know, I wore this to the clubs when I was when I was young in, in you know, college and stuff like that, because it has this um, it has this, um, you know, draw people. It draws people to you. It's very uh, fresh. It's a 90s scent, but it's not like a boring 90s um aquatic if you will it's not that it's not aqua de jo i don't care for aqua de jo i know it's the best selling men's fragrance of all time but it's not my thing this on the other hand is a 90s fragrance that i could wear and enjoy wearing it because it has these herbal elements it has thyme moss sandalwood cedarwood lavender and it is fresh, but it has that woody aspect, and it always reminds me of going out. I love this fragrance. Okay, next, we're going to go to the house of uh, Tower. And Tower has a women's fragrance that was sent to me, very kindly sent to me, by one of my uh, perfume god people. And um, it's called La Maroc Pour Elle. Now, this is one of the very first fragrances that Andy Tower released in 2005. So along with Leo du Desert Marocain, he released uh, La, uh, La Maroc Porel. And I'll do an early impression video on this fragrance very soon. But um, it's basically a spicy oriental floral fragrance. There's this Moroccan rose and jasmine combo. And there's lavender in the top. Uh, and there's cedar in the base with balsams. The usual, um, you know, tower aid is here. But it's very floral. Um, the jasmine will actually remind you of the jasmine in um, Samsara. If you know the way the jasmine in Samsara smells, it smells very similar in La Maroc Porel. Um, I think it's a good fragrance, but it's not bottle worthy for me. Now, here's one to maybe keep an eye on. This is a vintage bottle. This is a 5ml mini that I think Anuj sent me. And it's from the house of Dunhill, which if you have been following... Uh, I recently got a bottle of Dunhill Blend 30, and I'm in love with it. It's a 250 mil. I feel like I can just drench myself in it. I love the juice. It's so masculine. It's perfect for me. Uh, this came out, so Dunhill Blend 30 came out in 78. Dunhill Edition is what this one is called. Came out in 1984. And it's discontinued, of course. Uh, and it's lavender with carnation, geranium, clary sage, balsam fir, tonka, vetiver, and cedar wood. And, um, you know, it's definitely, this one is one I could see myself maybe getting a full bottle. But there are some fragrances that do similar things that I can talk about when I actually do the review. So, um, 
you know, if I get a good deal, it's one I'd, I'd maybe hunt down, but I'm not, I'm not going to kill myself trying to find a bottle. Now, uh, this is one that I know made the Fougere. This is not a top 10. So this is Fougere Royale X-Ray. Now, I've got a couple of these, again, thanks to Eddie. Thank you, Eddie. Um, came out in 2010. Rodrigo Flores Rue and Roja Dove apparently worked on this together. Uh, and this is just, you know, uh, benchmark Fougere. It's got lavender, herbs, kumarin, tonka, all that stuff. And um, it's a very well-made fragrance. Extremely well-made. Um, I don't know if I'd ever get a bottle because of how expensive it is, but, you know, I'll, I'll do a full review on it one day soon, or at least an early impression. Next, we're going to go to a Papillon. Now, this house, if you haven't watched my interview with Liz Moores, again, I would urge you to do that. She is um, an amazing creator. And I knew a couple of her fragrances because I bought full bottles, um, but I didn't know the whole line, and she was kind enough to send me a entire sample set. And so I did an early impression on uh, Tobacco Rose. Completely blew me away. And this is another one that's just the same. It's called Dryad. Uh, Dryad is absolutely amazing. It's like this green chifra, but it has these qualities. You know, if you know vintage fragrances, like if you know um, Robert Piguet's uh, Bandit, it has this amazing, you know, um, you know, Bandy almost like shocks you when you first spray. This has this, um, you know, to compare it to one of the greatest fragrances um, of the 1940s, just shows you the quality. Everything Liz Moore's touches is quality, but there's this lavender with castorium and iris, and there's all kind of things moving in the fragrance. You get tarragon, you know, you get uh, anise sometimes, you get thyme, um, styrax, you know, and I mentioned Styrax has this waxy, almost vanillic-like smell. Benzoin, tobacco, it's just its just such a complex. It's a fragrance for fragrance lovers. Dryad is one I can't wait to do an early impression on. Another one from a house I'm not as high on uh, is Francesca Bianchi. I like her work, but I don't think I would buy uh, many more of her bottles. Um, I did buy one, and... You know, it, it's not my favorite. I thought it was going to be better than it was because I blind bought it. This one, I don't have to blind buy, thanks to one of you. Um, more perfume god people. This is Under My Skin. And Under My Skin is a spicy animalic fragrance with lavender, rose, castorium. Uh, so again, very similar. You know, you get the lavender, you get the animalic aspects with leather, costas, which is sometimes a very challenging note if not used intelligently. Tree moss, tolu balsam, peru balsam, mysore sandalwood is what she lists. I don't know if it's real mysore or not. But um, Under My Skin is, is an interesting fragrance I can't wait to get to know. All right, so mostly the samples are done. Let's talk about the full bottle. So first one we're going to talk about is a discontinued fragrance, of course. Uh, this is Helmet Lang, Eau de Cologne. Now, the Eau de Cologne came out in 2000. It's a floral, fresh fragrance that apparently was supposed to smell like Helmet uh, Lang's Lover's Juices on, the, on clean sheets, okay? So, after coitus, clean sheets. Is coitus like the professional word for sex? I don't know. But after coitus, right, clean sheets. Um, so, it's basically supposed to smell like... Um, like his lover's fluids on clean sheets. How about that uh, for a fragrance? That was the brief given to the perfumer. How would you like to be the perfumer? And then on top of it, the perfumer is Maurice Roussel. Uh, but basically what he created is a very um, welcoming, very fresh, you know, somewhat herbal, um, somewhat floral even, musk. Musk is the main note here. This um, clean musk with lavender and rosemary in the top. And the rosemary, I think, saves the fragrance. It keeps it from being overly floral. It, it keeps it in that at least somewhat masculine. You know, if this is the line, traditional, anyone can wear anything, of course, but it's just barely to the masculine side um, because of the rosemary. But um, this is one that in the heat is absolutely beautiful. The Eau de Cologne, uh, 
from what I understand, the Eau de Cologne is the one that you want to hunt down. I've never compared it to the newer versions, Eau de Parfum, Eau de Toilette, but if you can find the older Eau de Cologne, rumor is that's the one that you want. Okay, next we're going to talk about a hype beast. And the hype beast is from the house of Parfums de Marly. And this is Leighton. Now, Leighton uh, is one of those fragrances that I actually like. Um, it's a little sweet for my liking. I wish it was less sweet. But if you want to wear something that is, you know, crowd-pleasing, uh, Leighton is, is one to have in the arsenal because it's this uh, amazing combination of apple, lavender, um, with that... Gaiac wood and vanilla base. Um, there are some florals in there too, but it's very, you know, if you want to wear something modern where everyone, you kind of blend in, you don't want to wear the vintage stuff I love wearing and talking about, Leighton is one that I'll reach for sometimes. Okay, now here's one that I don't like, and someone got mad at me for not liking this uh, the other day. Actually, it was kind of funny, um, but uh, it's Lamal, the original Lamal from 95. Francis Kirk John, what basically put Francis Kirk John on the map. This is lavender mint uh, and this disgusting sweet vanillic tonka thing in the base that gets me every time. I just can't wear it. It's too childish for me now. Um, you know, this is the vintage uh, BDI or B, whatever they call it. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, BPI is what they call it. The vintage BPI before Puige took over. Um, maybe I'll sell this when I'm done, you know, with the review, but I am not a fan. But I do like the style. So there's a couple perfumes you could go for in that style um, that I think do it better. One is a fragrance called Mabassin Pour Homme. And the bottle's cool. The creator's Alberto Mordier, so, you know, he's only done 10,000 fragrances. Uh, lavender, with rosemary, again, the addition of rosemary, I think, makes it more masculine. With sage, which is herbal and spicy. Um, bourbon, vanilla, cinnamon, musk, and sandalwood. I think this is better than, L than Lamal, my opinion. And then, I think this is better than both the previous two, and that's Casual Friday. Casual Friday is probably the best version of, you know, that DNA. Duncan got mad at me for saying that, but... I think it's true, I, but I think this is way better because it's a Dominique Ropion and he uses anise, tarragon, uh, and you get oak moss. It's more professional. It's more buttoned up. You know, it's spicier. You get some cardamom. You still get that lavender vanilla combo that became so popular, which by the way, for those of you that don't know, the lavender vanilla combo basically got popular here in Caron's Poronome. Now, I have a modern bottle. Let me just show you real quick so I can say I told you. Um, I have a modern bottle. Here it is. And um, I will tell you, I don't like the modern. Um, the modern, to me, smells cheap and synthetic. They claim they've never changed anything in the formula. I don't know if that's really true or not. Um, because... When I smell this, and I smell this, and it has nothing to do with, you know, sitting in the bottle and letting the juice, you know, um, stew, and it's it, letting letting air in the bottle or anything like that. I sprayed them both new. Um, they were both unsprayed when I got them. You know, this is a bottle from the 80s, I think. I think it's from the 80s. And it smells much more, it, there's more of an animalic facet to uh, this pour it home. And, but this is one of the best lavender, if you're just talking, you want one of the most classic lavender fragrances of all time, get this bottle in this format. If you have tastes like mine, you will not be disappointed. The, the uh, lavender, you get four types of lavender in here. French lavender, provincial lavender, French lavender absolute, and provincial lavender absolute. So um, go watch my interview with Russian Adam and we basically break down the differences between the uh, essential oils and the absolutes that he sent me. Um, so there's a lot of information on, on those interviews. From the same house, uh, there's a fragrance called Le Toise Homme, uh, or Caron's Third Man. This is the vintage bottle before they put it in the bottles that basically look like this. Um, so I think it's still available, but I don't know... Um, 
the differences. I hear the current version is quite nice, but when Eugene smelled a vintage version from a bottle like this before, he said it's unrecognizable to him, and he knew and wore the modern. Um, so it's spicy, it's green, it's lavender with clove. It's an amazing lavender clove, um, oak moss, vetiver fragrance. Fantastic fragrance. M masculine to the core, I absolutely love it. Um, and then, speaking of masculine to the core, and again, anyone can wear anything, but I think traditionally masculine fragrance is Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit is, you know, a revelation. Lavender, uh, there's a big floral heart in Fahrenheit with that violet leaf, that gasoline and leather. Oh, I mean, if you've never smelled Fahrenheit, and it's also one you can just buy the current version of. You don't have to um, hunt vintage bottles. I mean, you can. This is a bottle from 96. I've got one from 89, uh, but I also have one from about 2014, and all of them are amazing. I mean, I wouldn't pay big money for old Fahrenheit because the new stuff is so good. Okay, next, uh, we're going to go to a discontinued uh, Comme de Garçon fragrance. Pharrell Williams uh, worked on this with them, and it's called Girl in the Insane Bottle. Uh, the artist Cause designed the bottle with the dead eyes, and uh, Pharrell Williams was actually a fan of Fahrenheit, okay? And so this fragrance, if you like Fahrenheit, this is an amazing fragrance because it uses that um, lavender violet leaf combo, if you will, and it adds this pepper, almost like the way Nathalie Lorson uses white pepper or pepper in the top. And um, the base is patchouli, sandalwood, vetiver, cedar, but with an amazing iris. There's an amazing iris note in here. And um, so, yes, check out Pharrell Williams Girl if you can. Um, you know, don't pay silly money, but it used to be a cheapie. Used to be able to get it for, God knows, you know, $20, $30. Now I see bottles go for hundreds, but um, if you can find it for a relatively decent price, that's one to, to take a look at. Okay, next we're going to go to, now this is a pure unicorn, extremely hard to find. Um, and someone actually wrote me on Instagram and said, hey, uh, do you know any fragrances that are like this? And I just, no, I don't. I mean, there's nothing I can really compare it to without just going and buying this. This is a Shiseido fragrance, and it's called Basara. Now, they changed the name of the fragrance later on to Basala, uh, but I hear they're basically the same fragrance, just different name. But it's a spicy, leathery fragrance with lavender, citruses, tobacco, spices, sandalwood, leather, and amber. You could try to go buy something modern, but even that's discontinued. There's an old Michael Coors fragrance called Michael. And um, Michael has this uh, tobacco thing going on. Uh, it might satisfy for the tobacco part, but it's not going to give you everything else Bas Basala gives you. There's really nothing, you know, that does the lavender, tobacco, leather quite like this that I've ever come across. But if anyone finds anything, I'd love to hear about it. Okay, next we're going to go to the house of um, Ralph Lauren. And I absolutely love uh, this fragrance. I have a backup. And, you know, anytime I have a backup, it's one to put an asterisk by because they're my most favorite fragrances. This is Safari for men, of course. Uh, 1992. Well, the women's bottle doesn't look like this is why I say that. Um, Safari for men. Spicy, woody. It's that late 80s. Uh, early 90s DNA. I love so I love that DNA for whatever it's worth. I mean, you know, some people say that big time niche, big time fragrance lovers think that, you know, the fragrance world changed forever in the early to mid 90s and never really adjusted, never came back. And I'm, I'm one of those people. I'm not the long lived perfume. Perfume is dead because I still buy stuff, you know, as you can see. Um, in fact, my, my most recent purchase is coming up very soon and it's a niche fragrance from 2016. I buy stuff all the time. Um, but you know, there, there is a distinct change in attitude that never recovered. And so this is Safari. Uh, it has this amazing aldehydic citrus core. I love coriander. So tarragon and coriander are some of my favorite masculine opening, uh, top notes with, of course, the, 
the usual suspects, the bergamot. In this case, it's lavender in the top. Uh, there is tarragon in, in the heart, but the dry down is leather and oak moss, and it's just, you know, the old school way that they used to do sandalwood and spicy carnation, which is missing. I love, absolutely love safari. Okay, we gotta pick this up because this video is gonna be 12 hours if I don't hurry up. Next, we're gonna go to Chanel, and this is the modern version. This is a case where I actually prefer the modern version. Uh, it's a citrus style sheaf for fragrance called Pour Monsieur. Now, the original Pour Monsieur came out in the 50s, and it's an eau de toilette. This is the eau de parfum. Uh, so the eau de toilette smells different from the eau de parfum to my nose. I actually don't like the eau de toilette as much. I prefer the eau de parfum or the eau de toilette concentrate, which came out in the 80s. But uh, this has lavender. I don't think the original eau de toilette has lavender. Um, it's got cardamom, nutmeg, uh, and I think they amped up this resinous, like sweet myrrh base and added some vanilla. Um, and so, you know, it's a good fragrance. I enjoy it. I like it. I don't love it, but I, I, I struggle with the eau de toilette. This is a way that I can kind of wear this DNA uh, and at least kind of enjoy it a little bit. So there's lavender in the eau de parfum. And then there's lavender in Duc de Vervins. Uh, I think this is the extreme. Yeah, Duc de Vervins La Extreme. And um, this is basically bergamot, lavender, rosemary. There is some cumin here, but it's all part of the uh, fougere experience, if you will. So this is probably the reason why I might not buy Houbigant's Fougère Royale because they're both green fougères um, and this is so good. I enjoy this so much that I don't know if I'd spring for the um, Fougère Royale, but there's Oak Moss Absolute in the base, um, but that lavender in here is just stunning. Uh, and we'll get to some more fragrances with this DNA soon. Okay, next we're going to talk about an Ungaro fragrance and this is called Ungaro Pour Lome three. Now, this is the third one, uh, and they're all basically created by Franc uh, Francois Demachy and Jacques Polge, okay? Those were the two perfumers. And the reason that they, those are Chanel perfumers, if you know, you know, the history of their careers, by the way. And the reason that they worked on all of the Ungaro fragrances is that Ungaro basically contracted their fragrances out to Chanel. So Chanel's in-house perfumers, Francois Demachy and Jacques Polge, worked on all of the Ungaros like this up until a certain certain point. So if you ever see Ungaro 1 and 2 and 3 and it, and it gives credit to Jacques Polge or Francois Demachy, they both get credit. Shouldn't be just one or the other because they worked as a team at Chanel. Uh, and this is lavender, coriander, mahogany, sage. There's a very strange vodka note, but I will tell you something uh, that you might kind of uh, shake your head and go, what? But if you give it a chance and give it a wear, I think you'll understand what I'm saying. If you like the way that Francois Demachy and Jacques Polge did the rose note in Antaeus, just the rose, not the rest of the fragrance, okay? This does not smell like Antaeus. Do not come at me with the pitchforks. Um, but just the rose note, if you can remove that note, um, it's here. That rose from Antaeus is here. Uh, but it's mixed with other notes, as you can see. You get the lavender, the vodka. It's a very strange fragrance. Um, it's spicy. It's a little bit woody because there's some woody, you know, vetiver and, and cedar and sandalwood in the base. But, um, I mean, I like it. I, I think it's worth a sniff. If you can find an older bottle, uh, do so. I don't know what the new stuff smells like. But um, there's, there's the bottom of this bottle. I think I got this from um, Anouj at Enchante. I think he still has bottles if you're interested. Okay, now this is a unicorn, and I love this fragrance. And I'll give you a potential replacement if you can't find it. Uh, this came out in 1998. It's, uh, I think, I can't remember the perfumer. Maybe Alberto Mordias, uh, but it's called By Dolce & Gabbana By Man. And so this is a tester. Again, a news found me, thank God, because I struggled to find this fragrance. I looked and I looked and I just refused to pay the insane prices that were being asked. Um, 
So discontinued, of course. Uh, this is a peppery green. There's some artemisia and lavender with amber and a ton of ambroxan. This is one of the earliest um, ambroxan overdoses to my nose that I've smelled. 1998 is very early for a huge ambrox overdose. And you get that here. You get a lot of hedione, a lot of ambroxan. Um, so it's a very synthetic smelling fragrance, but the lavender in here is just stunningly smooth. It's so beautiful. It's done so well. It's a perfect work fragrance. Um, you know, this smells so posh, so high class, you know, so professional. This is, if, if I had to have like a work signature scent, this would be in the running. But if you can't find it, okay, if you're in the spot where you just can't find it, you don't want to pay the crazy prices, you don't want to pay $1,000 on eBay, try to find this. Very Valentino for men. Um, so Very Valentino, this is the Unilever version. Um, there apparently is an earlier version that I've never smelled. Um, but even this version is still good. Uh, this came out in um, 1999. So it came out one year after By Man, and you can totally see the um, inspiration, you know, that By Man really inspired Very Valentino. Uh, it's spicy, it's woody, it has that lavender, um, you know, it has that lavender uh, herbal combination that By Man has. Um, it's not as peppery. They've used some other notes. You get anise and, you know, coriander, which I love. Um, but they've added tobacco. And I don't know if By Man has any tobacco in it. If it does, it's very slight. You know, just to round it out, there's a thicker tobacco note here. Um, it's still a good fragrance, but it falls into that same very pleasant, perfect for work category. Maybe a little bit more nighttime because of the tobacco and the amber and the resins, but uh, they are, you know, they are definitely, uh, this inspired this. Okay, next we're going to go to the house of Loewe, very underrated house. And um, this is one of their best fragrances. It's called Essencia. And this is the old bottle. The new bottles will not look like this. They will look like this. They'll look like this. This is what all the new bottles look like. It's an LVMH owned company. And anytime LVMH owns a company, they try to streamline the um, packaging to make costs in, as efficient as possible. Um, buy the Eau de Toilette. Don't buy the Eau de Parfum. Even if you can get the Eau de Toilette in the new bottle, get it. You know, the Eau de Toilette's a good fragrance. If you like stuff like Polo Green with that lavender, leather, pine, tobacco, which I absolutely love. Polo Green's one of my favorite vintage fragrances. This is an Olivier Crest, by the way, who created, you know, Amen and all those beautiful fragrances. Olivier Crest is an amazing perfumer. Um, Essencia is definitely one to sniff if you like old fragrances and you've never... And you've never smelled that one. Now, here's a newer fragrance uh, from the house of Carolina Herrera. And this is called CH Men Privé in the whiskey flask. And this just shows, this just shows how versatile lavender can be, okay? Because, because this fragrance is mostly about the whiskey the leather, the benzoin, you know, the tonka. It's a winter fragrance for sure. But the top is red thyme, sage, lavender, and grapefruit. So the lavender just, you know, helps keep it on the masculine side. Uh, but that herbalness also helps bring you into that whiskey leather note. You know, it eases you into it. It's absolutely beautiful. I love this fragrance. I think it's an amazing designer. Um, this came out in 2015, and uh, I, I don't think this is even a vintage bottle. I think this is just a newer bottle, but I can't really tell. Um, but uh, yes, put this on the on the to sniff list. Next, uh, we're gonna go to the house of uh, Paco Rabanne, and this is one of the greatest masculines ever released. It's called Paco Rabanne Porom. Now, my bottle, of course, is the vintage raised R. That's what you want. 
If you're interested in trying to find a vintage Paco Rabanne, there's like five or six different versions of this, like literally. Um, and each version has been reformulated. So instead of going version by version, uh, which that could probably take an hour video in and of itself, just try to find one that has the raised R. Forget about everything else. Just get one that has the raised R and you'll be good. Uh, this basically is this amazing rosemary, rosemary rosewood, clary sage, uh, lavender, oak moss fragrance that, you know, my father has worn as his signature scent for basically my whole life. Uh, Jean Martel gets, gets credit for this. And he's only made a couple of fragrances, but everything he, he's made has been uh, amazing. And these older bottles have this honey in the dry down. And that honey note is absolutely just, when you get it, you don't get it every time. Sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't, depending on the weather. But when you get it, it is just, it's like a revelation. I mean, it's it's so beautiful. Um, now, if you like Paco Rabanne Pour Homme, but you don't want to pay or can't find a vintage bottle, try this. They're different, but they're close enough where you can try it. It's called Bogart. Now, a lot of people call it Bogart Signature, but that's actually not what it's called. It's just named Bogart by Jacques Bogart. Uh, it came out in 75. It's also green and spicy. This takes that DNA of uh, Paco Rabanne Pour Homme. Uh, the lavender's there, the rosemary's there, the moss is there, but it adds a couple elements. Number one, the main thing is Russian leather. And anytime you get Russian leather, you also get birch. You get that smoky birch with it. Uh, that's like a that's like a one-two combo. You know, you get the McDonald's burger, you gotta get the fries, right? You get the Russian leather, most times you're gonna get the birch. It's part of the combo. And here you get that. So imagine Paco Rabanne Pour Homme with that Russian leather and birch and clove added. It's so good. It's an amazing fragrance. Even in its $18 for 190 mil form, even the modern. I have a vintage. It's not worth hunting down a vintage. Go for the modern stuff. It's, it's a stunning fragrance. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about my newest uh, acquisition. And I absolutely love this stuff. I'm so glad to find a bottle at a respectable price. I mean, I did pay, but not, you know, I saw bottles for seven, eight, nine, a hundred, a thousand dollars on eBay. Uh, this is Tom Ford's Vert de Encense, green incense. And there's lavender in this with frankincense, uh, boxwood, which I'm not sure what boxwood is. Um, but there's tree sap. Uh, it's an it's an it's a Tom Ford worthy of the Tom Ford label. You know, it's not some of the crap that they've put out since since this fragrance came out in 2016. They have put out some absolute crap. Um, you know, they've went down that lost cherry and all that stuff. That's not even worth it. Definitely not worth the, the um, private blend price tag. But uh, Vert d'Encens is to me. It's discontinued, but an amazing fragrance. Okay, next we're gonna go to Lapidus. Pour um, I mean, what can you say about Lapidus? One of the best 80s fragrances, from my opinion. Um, if you like fragrances like Hugo Boss Number 1 with that animalic honey, you have to try Lapidus Pour Homme. This is a modern. Again, I have a vintage, and while the vintage is good, and there are differences, some would say the vintage is better, I wouldn't go pay big money for it. Just buy this. Uh, they've done an... I have no clue how the House of Lapidus or... Bogart, how they do this, but uh, they, they've done amazing reformulations, and this has that lavender in the top with pineapple and just a slew of notes. Um, tobacco, I mean, it's, it's classic 80s. I love it. Next, we're going to talk about Moschino Porom, which is also discontinued. Uh, some say it's similar to Bellamy with the leather, the lavender, the leather. There's castorium in the base. Uh, there's rosemary in the top. It is a good fragrance. It's um, it's not as good to, as Bellamy to me. Uh, even though it will remind you of Bellamy, it has features of Bellamy. Uh, Bellamy is, you know, stands alone. But if you're a vintage hunter and you love leather like I do, definitely worth hunting down. The lavender in the top is really nice. Okay, next we're going to go to the house of Mem. Uh, sorry, the House of Bagway, uh, and this is called Mem. 
Now, this is one I kind of struggle with. Um, it's probably going to be classified as an animalic floral. That's probably the classification, if you will. Um, but this has one of the most... Um, this has uh, one of the most, um, you know, just absolutely uh, tenacious lavender notes. It just goes on. It seems to just go on and on. Antonio Gardoni is the perfumer. And um, he um, made fragrances like T-Rex, which is another huge fragrance. And his fragrances are very challenging to me for some reason. Um, I usually love challenging fragrances, but... His fragrances really get to me, you know, um, really off-putting. And this is one such fragrance where I really have to work to enjoy it. Um, I think it's a good fragrance. It's a complex fragrance. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, if you love lavender and florals, animalic notes, and you want something challenging, check out Mem. Okay, from challenging to straight-up designer, this is uh, F Black by Ferragamo. Now, this is discontinued, apparently. Uh, Olivier Polge is the perfumer. So, just like uh, Midnight in Paris, something that was just laying around everywhere at the discount bins no one wants is all of a sudden discontinued. And um, this is Apple with Lavender, Lavender Absolute, Labdanum Tonka, Black Pepper. I think this is a great designer. I... I mean, I know Jeremy Fragrance recommended this back when he was still interested in fragrances, but um, F Black is, uh, you know, I only have a 30 mil, but that's enough. At least I can kind of talk about it and wear it and get to know it. Okay, now here's one I've been infatuated with, and I cannot wait to wear it once the weather turns cool. Uh, this is Obsession for Men by Calvin Klein. Now, this is the Calvin Klein Cosmetics version, okay? Calvin Klein Cosmetics. I have a Coty version. Here, I'll show you, just so you don't think I'm fibbing. I have a Coty version, and it's shite. This is absolute shit. They should just discontinue this, to be honest with you. It's not even worth... Um, it's honestly not even worth them selling it at all. They've, they've completely ruined it. They lost what made Obsession Obsession. There is this unbelievable furry, fuzzy, animalic, oriental, spicy oriental fragrance that just emanates from this. I mean, you don't get a note tree as much as you just get, you know, um, you just get hit with this tightly wound ball of animalic fragrance. Um, there is lavender in the top, but it's mostly about the myrrh, the, the amber, um, you know, the there's patchouli, of course, to round everything out. Vanilla, big vanilla. But that animalic, you know, ambery. Um, if you like this, I would tell you to try to hunt down a bottle of JHL by Aramis. Uh, or hunt down Lagerfeld Cologne. If you can only get the classic, get it. But if you can find Lagerfeld Cologne from 1978, uh, I think that's a direct ancestor of obsession for men uh, or women. I mean, they're they're very close to each other. But um, the lavender in the top with the citruses, which kind of instantly gets swallowed up by this furry, amazing... I mean, I've worn it to bed multiple times now uh, within the last couple weeks, and I absolutely... I am, I'm in love with that fragrance right now. Okay, let's talk about another niche house. This is Fougere Bengal. I don't know if I own this when I did that this is not a top 10 Fougere, but this house, okay, um, this house of Parfums d'Empire, I've been very smitten with. Uh, this fragrance is very unique because it's lavender. It's a Fougere, but it's lavender with Assam tea, hay, animalic notes, oak moss, tobacco. Everything that he does, he does with an animalic twist, and I really appreciate that very much um, because it always keeps everything interesting, and um, everything I've smelled from him has been stunning. I haven't smelled a bad fragrance yet. I haven't smelled everything, but, I, but I'm really taken with that brand. I think the value for money is through the roof, too. He doesn't overcharge people. Uh, I think he's very fair. 
Okay, next we're going to go to the house of Enrico Coveri, and this is Coveri Porom. Now, Coveri Porom is a classic um, structure. So I would put, you know, the classic fougere structures like Duc de Vervins, Lachstrem, and Coveri Porom in the same category. They're obviously different, but that classic fougere structure uh, is here. And it's lavender with clove, basil, all the usual uh, fougere notes, if you will, spicy and woody. Um, and quite frankly, I mean, worth it. If you love fougeres, uh, this is an amazing fragrance. Even in its more recent iteration, this is not an, a deep vintage. This is distributed by Eva Flor. And I think they've done a very good job. Um, I think it's now officially discontinued. But uh, the deep vintage is even better from what I hear. Okay, next we're going to go to the house of Cartier. And this is Pasha de Cartier, EDT. The, e the parfum, they, there's a parfum version which um, smells nothing like the EDT. Okay, the parfum is very modern. Um, you know, it's, it's following in the trend of many of these houses where they add like this boozy note to try to modernize the fragrance. Um, I still think the Parfum is a good perfume, but the EDT is just completely different. It's, it's a classic um, spicy woody fougere. And what makes it interesting is it has this very strange mint note in the top. So it's kind of fresh and refreshing. Uh, there's lavender and thyme with the usual, you know, fougere breakdown, coriander, oak moss, um, Kumarin, and um, yes, I mean, if you've never smelled Pasha in Eau de Toilette, you should, and this is supposed to be a pen, in case you, you didn't know what the bottle was, it's supposed to be kind of a pen. Uh, don't ask me why I'm writing on my hand, but I am. Um, I'm going to grab real quick, don't go anywhere, I'm going to grab a quick drop so my throat doesn't go out on you guys. Okay. Next, we're going to go to a very rare and hard to find fragrance, and I'm so glad I have a bottle of this um, because I love it. Uh, and I'll be reviewing it at some point on my channel, but I have to cherish it because it's a very, um, it's almost impossible to find nowadays. If you find it, get it. You know, if it's reasonably priced, just buy it. Uh, it's going to be blind, but I'm telling you, it's worth it. It's called Bally Masculine. So, the House of Bally. Um, is a house that's not really known for their fragrances. You can look them up and you can find their, you know, calfskin leather moccasin selling for $8,000. It's just an insanely high-end house. But they put out a fragrance in the 80s that I think basically flopped. Didn't do well. Because it's a very, um, it's a very interesting release, at least to me. Uh, because it came out, I think, a year or two before Bellamy. And when you first spray, you'll see no relation to Bellamy. Zero. None. Okay? You're going to get mostly lavender and fougere elements. Okay? That's what you're going to get. You're going to get geranium and stuff like that. Um, but in the dry down, it turns into almost this leathery scent. And... Part of me wants to think that this may have even inspired, uh, somewhat inspired Bellamy, because this came out a couple years before. And Bally Masculine, um, I think, was kind of niche enough, if you want to call it that. There was no niche back then, but it was almost like targeted enough where um, I could see this influencing a perfumer, you know. But the fact that it has. Um, you know, anise and all of these interesting fougere elements. Not all fougeres have, have anise, but some of them do, like Azaroporum, coming up soon. And that was pro this probably was inspired by Azaroporum. Um, but then making that leathery base so elegant and well done. I mean, I just, I, I, I adore this stuff. And, um, oh, you know, and I love the fact that it's obscure. You know, there's just something about that where, you know, the odds of me, I'd have to walk around my, you know, 
I'd have to walk around my work or city or for 500 years before I ran into someone else wearing that. All right, next, <clears throat> we're going to go to Guerlain. And of course, you can't talk lavender without Jiki. Jiki started it all. Uh, the first modern fragrance, lavender, uh, rose, vetiver, spices, leather. There's that beautiful civet. It's animalic. I love Jiki. It is... Um, it, it is, you know, if you're the kind of person like me where you like seeing links between fragrances, you know, you like to see the, um, the uh, pit stops in time, but you also like to kind of travel along the same highway and, and follow the route, Jiki is a must sniff uh, because you'll smell it in other fragrances. It came out in 1889, and then in 1904, um, uh, in 1904, Jacques Guerlain put out Mouchoir de Monsieur, which is supposed to be like the masculine jicky, if you will. It's um, It's got that powderiness, which that's the thing about lavender, is lavender can usually smell herbal, right? Uh, but it can also give off this powdery aspect sometimes. And uh, you get lots of, um, you get some of that powder here, but he's mixed it so well. Yeah, I mean, it's mixed so well with the um, lemon vervain, um, patchouli, rose, cinnamon, oak moss. There's iris added here, vanilla, amber. I actually think I, some days if you catch me, I'll say I prefer this over Jiki. Some days I'll say Jiki, you know, you can't take away from the classic Jiki. But I do know that when we are talking Jiki, I much prefer this uh, vintage eau de toilette over the modern eau de parfum. The modern eau de parfum uh, just smells like, you know, civet in the dry down. I mean, literally, like you're smelling the synthetic civet that Russian Adam gave to me. Um, but uh, I think I much prefer the EDT. It's more nuanced. Okay, next we're going to go to one of my favorite Guerlain's, and this is Heritage. Now, sorry, this is Heritage. Now, um, Heritage came out in 92. It's my favorite masculine Guerlain, hands down. I mean, Abbey Rouge is a is a is a second place, but I don't I don't think it's a close second. I think Heritage is the best masculine Jean Paul Guerlain ever created. And um, if you if you know Jiki, you'll smell Jiki in the opening of Heritage. And if you know Abbey Rouge, you'll smell bits of Abbey Rouge, and it's it's just an amazing creation. But it has this lavender. And, you know, when you first smell, when you first spray, uh, it starts off, oh, you can instantly just get that patchouli, um, but it's not patchouli forward fragrance, you know, it's, um, the spices are there, there's coriander, there's citruses, it's so, it's just perfect. For me, it's absolutely perfect. Someone commented that, yeah, if you want to smell like a grandpa, you could wear this. And I instantly wrote them off. You know, usually I, I'll say whatever, you know, everyone has their own taste. I won't be mad if someone doesn't understand a fragrance. But if you're on here, you know, talking shit to me because I bashed Blue de Chanel Parfum and then you go and bash Heritage, you've basically proven your fragrance ignorance as far as I'm concerned. Okay, next we're going to go to a fragrance that I think um, may have even inspired Jean-Paul Guerlain to do Heritage. And that's Zeno by the House of Davidoff because it has been uh, recorded uh, in a couple places. There's a Fragrantica article. You can look it up if you're interested. But Michel Almarac, who is a creator of Zeno, basically said that they used Shalimar, a Guerlain classic, of course, with the vanilla, uh, the, the vanilla base, the oriental base. So they used Guerlainade base as an inspiration for Zeno. How about that? And then, Heritage comes out, you know, a couple years later. This came out in 86, Heritage came out in 92, and to me, um, they share elements. I think the fact that Michel Almarac used uh, Shalimar as a, you know, uh, a sounding board, a baseboard, uh, a diving board to jump uh, to this creation inspired Jean-Paul Guerlain to, you know, create his own version, if you will. And I love them both. But um, Zeno has 
this much more pronounced um, floral aspect, if you will. And it especially comes out in different weathers. So that spicy geranium with the rose, the rose here is, um, I mean, the rose here just comes, just comes at you uh, out of nowhere in the mid, you know, you're, you're smelling the lavender, the bergamot, there is that beautiful rosewood, which of course smells like rose, but, uh, it smells like wood infused with rose. And then you get the real rose here. And that's probably the biggest difference between Heritage is the rose here is more pronounced. Um, but it's a beautiful, I mean, they're both fantastic for me. And I thought this was discontinued. Rumor is it's discontinued, but apparently it's not. I mean, I it keeps uh, I keep seeing bottles, and you know, so I don't think it's discontinued. Next, we're gonna go to the house of uh, Guy La Roche, and this is Dracar Noir. Now, this took the fragrance world by storm in '82. Pierre Wagnai is the creator, is the perfumer. Um, lavender with artemisia, rosemary, carnation, oak moss, balsam fir, leather, patchouli, cedarwood, and a huge dose of dihydromercenol. Okay, so if, you, um, if you're familiar with dihydromercenol, it gives off this, you know, uh, freshness, if you will. And um, this is really where uh, the 80s began to turn, and you started to see things come out like uh, New West by Aramis in 87. This was 82. But um, I like Dracar Noir. I don't love it, but I like it. But there's a fragrance I recently got that I'm infatuated with because I think it takes Dracar Noir to the next level, if you will. And it's called Caesar's Man. Now, the vintage says Legendary Cologne Spray. And I bought this off of a mate who's a subscriber, Sticks Schlong Hammer. Thank you, Sticks. Um, and uh, Caesar's Man is, uh, I'm sure people are going to rewind that and listen to me say his name over and over. But uh, yes, yeah, Sticks is the man. And he has an amazing collection too. Um, but this is green, spicy, rosemary, vervain, lavender, oak moss, patchouli, and sandalwood. But there's something about the combination. There's just something about the combination that attracts my imagination here, where here I don't get it as much. It's a little bit more common now for some reason, maybe because I've smelled Dracar Noir for so long, but this is definitely, they used to, some people will call this a clone of Dracar Noir. I don't think it's a clone, but I think it's heavily inspired by it, but they did such a fantastic job in the vintage. The rumor is the new one that doesn't say legendary cologne spray has been butchered. Don't bother with it. Um, but if you can find a vintage at a good price like I did, oh, it's amazing. I would highly recommend it. <clears throat> okay. Next, we're going to go to a niche house, and that is Bois 1920 Vetiver Ambrato. Now, anytime you buy from this house, make sure you get the Eau de Toilette. Do not get the new Eau de Parfums. That's the rumor, okay? I've never smelled them, but I'm going off of Rich Mitch's nose. He claims reformulation, and they've been butchered. I will take his word for it. I trust him. This is spicy, woody, came out in 2005. Um, it has this spicy geranium and clove, you know, opening with lavender, patchouli, and it dries into this base that will remind you a little bit of Shalimar. There's something about the bergamot in the top, the amber, the benzoin, the vanilla that will give you Shalimar vibes, but there's more going on because there's galbanum, it's a little green, there's tobacco, uh, I love this fragrance. I think it's highly, highly underrated vetiver ambrato. Okay, now here's a fragrance I don't care so much for, but I will force myself to wear it once the weather gets cold so I can talk about it for you guys. It's Rochas Man in the absolutely terrible bottle, whatever you think this looks like. Um, you know, if you said lava lamp, I'd believe you. If you said something else, I'd believe you. Uh, Rochas Man uh, came out in 99. Maurice Roussel is the perfumer. Lavender with um, musk, raspberry, amber, coffee, sandalwood, vanilla, and patchouli. Supposed to smell very similar to Bond New Harlem. And I think it does. I've never smelled New Harlem, but that's the rumor. 
Uh, Inter Parfums makes this. They don't make bad fragrances. So even though that sweetness is not my favorite, I can appreciate it for what it is. Okay, next we're going to go to the house of Milano Cento, and this is him. Milano Cento for him. Um, this is the Eau de Toilette. Uh, if you like Koros's opening, but you want something modern, you don't want to hunt down vintage bottles of Koros, check this out. This has Koros's opening stapled on to a fougere DNA. Lavender, rosemary, basil, sandalwood, cinnamon, amber, musk, clove. Beautiful clary sage. Beautiful fougere. It dries to a spicy fougere. Starts like Koros for the first 10 minutes, and then it changes. Um, okay, next we're going to go to the house of Loewe, and this is Solo. This is the old bottle. Again, the new one's the one I showed you earlier when we were talking about Essencia. Solo uses this guava note, which is a very strange note, but apparently it's very common in uh, Latin cultures. Latin countries are very familiar with the note of guava. Lavender, thyme, patchouli, bergamot, cinnamon, cumin, and nutmeg. And, um, you know, it's a unique fragrance. It's not my favorite, but Carlos Benaim did it, and you know he puts out good stuff. So check out Solo. It's still being marketed, you know, 18 years later. Now, here's a masterpiece, um, and one that will take you some time to get to appreciate if you're a new, if you're new to the, to the, uh, world of complex niche fragrances. This is Amouage Memoir Man. This is the only Amouage I own that's a tester. Um, and I wish I would have just got a regular bottle so I could have a cap. It stands out in my collection being the only one without a cap. But this has this um, uh, green, almost like you're driving through a forest uh, you know, after taking LSD, literally, that's, that's, that's the image in my mind. There's this insane, like Alice in Wonderland terror forest, you know, uh, but it's so green and you just want to explore. There's lavender, tarragon, mint, absinthe, frankincense, leather, there's guyac wood, tobacco, vanilla. It's such a complex fragrance. And, um, one of the best green, you know, takes on, on green. Green fragrances some people don't like, you know. Um, some people think they're boring or off-putting or whatever. If you have never smelled a green fragrance that you like, I would highly urge you, highly, to try Memoir Man. Look at the dent. That's my dent. That's a hell of a dent. Um, I love this stuff. Can't wait to wear it in the uh, fall, autumn, and winter. Okay. Next, we're going to go to a couple Gucci's back-to-back. -back. First, Gucci Nobile, or Nobile, from um, 88, I think. Um, lavender, rosemary, tarragon, oak moss, tonka, all that good stuff. Amazing, amazing fougere. And then we're going to go to Gucci Pour Homme 1, which is... Um, a cedar fragrance, a big cedar, chop a block of cedar and put it put it in, in here, you know, and, and that's basically what you get with spices, um, lavender, uh, frankincense, there is this little bit of smokiness to it, papyrus, burnt paper, you know, that, that kind of vibe, burnt incense with cedar, amazing, Michelle Alamarak. Now, here's an underrated one. If you guys are tired of seeing Patel Pour Homme at a thousand bucks and all that crazy numbers on vintage fragrances, try to find this. This is Versace versus Uomo. Uh, it came out in 91, I think, and it's my favorite Versace. I'll tell you that, okay? My favorite Versace. It has this um, lavender, peach, bergamot, petit gras opening with rosewood. I love rosewood. Um, old school carnation, orris, there's that beautiful orris, sandalwood, vanilla, amber, and musk. It's a fantastic fragrance. Now, get this one. Make sure you get the bottle that looks like this, because there's another one that says V-S, and it's a different fragrance. Okay, next. Arrogance Uomo. Now, Arrogance um, is heavily inspired by Koros. Uh, Koros is superior, obviously, but um, Arrogance Uomo... Um, is lavender, 
with spicy geranium to try to give that freshness of Koros with, um, you know, a little bit of that animalic funk, right? Trying to imitate Koros, but it doesn't really get there. It's like an Italian take on Koros. That's the best way I can describe it. Okay, next, we're going to go to Narciso Rodriguez for him. And this is a very creative uh, Francis Kirk John creation. Lavender, violet leaf, pink pepper, perfect for a day like today where it rains. It has this wet concrete vibe, musk. He loves those white musks. Here, at least, it's unique. And I wish he'd get back to making stuff like this. Discontinued, of course. Okay, next, we're going to do some Roja Doves, just a couple. Um, so the first one is going to be Scandal. And of course, there's lavender in here. Um, this is his take on a classic fougere. Yeah, spicy fougere, lavender, tarragon, spearmint. There's a lot of spearmint in the opening, but it dries to that rosia floral DNA, patented DNA of his. Um, very posh, very elegant type fragrance. Uh, and then, of course, um, one of my favorites is Danger, which is heavily inspired, heavily inspired by Heritage. He's taken Heritage and basically rosied it up. He added some cumin. He added some cumin um, and some animalic notes, rhubarb and stuff like that, and charges 500 bucks for it. Insane pricing, but um, uh, Danger is amazing. And then... We're going to go to um, a Van Cleef in Arpels. So we've got Sar. Vintage Sar. Uh, this is an at a pair, I think, bottle. Um, spicy green. Um, rosemary, Artemisia, coriander, lavender, old school carnation. Uh, it's just one of the best fougeres. If you like that spicy green fougere with pine, I mean, Zara is top of the food chain. It's amazing. And then we've got Fendi Womo. So again, this goes to show how versatile lavender is. It's in stuff like Zara. It's also in stuff like Fendi Womo, which is mostly a leather, castorium, spices. There's Angelica in here. I, I've never met a fragrance with Angelica I don't like. Um, iris to smooth everything out. Carnation, spicy old school. Just... Amazing. One of my favorite Italian leathers. Um, probably my favorite Italian leather, now that I'm thinking about it. Okay, next. I pulled this one out of storage to show you guys. This is the classic version of Alain Delon, and I prefer this version over even the vintage one, even the deep vintage. There's something about this version that says classic that I absolutely love. Most people say, oh, the classic is the shitty one that's been reformulated. I have the original. Um, and here it is. Here's the original that doesn't say classic. In fact, I've done a video. I've compared these two. Um, and I prefer the classic. They're all discontinued now. But um, this is basically the spicy, resinous, green, basil, mugwort, lavender, geranium, pine. There's this honey note um, in the base. The old school one is much more spicy and green. Um, maybe that's why I like this version better. I think it focuses more on kind of the honey. And it's uh, just an amazing, this is an all year rounder though. And, of course, the uh, lavender in the top is beautiful. Okay, now, again, to the versatility of lavender. This is Etrogoma. Now, Goma is one of my favorite leathers. It's one of my favorite discoveries of the last couple years um, because of the way the leather is used here. Edward Fleischer made this. Ugh, birch and leather. Stunning. Tarragon in the top. I love tarragon. Um... This is the vintage Eau de Cologne that's discontinued, but um, I've never tried the Eau de Toilette, so I can vouch for the vintage Eau de Cologne. Uh, the lavender in the top, of course, is beautiful in Etros Goma. 
And then probably one of the most unique lavender fragrances I've ever smelled. Very artistic, very amazing artistic fragrance. Music for a while. One of the only fragrances in my collection I regret only getting a 50 mil. I wish I had 100 mils of this. Um, it's got this, re oh, the pineapple. Pineapple, lavender, vanilla, amber, patchouli. It's just stunning. It is... Um, probably one of the most unique fougeres I've ever smelled. Okay, back to the classic fougere DNA. This is Bon Monsieur by the House of Rogue. Now, this is probably my most favorite modern fougere, okay? A fougere done in the last five years. Not Gucci Nobile, stuff like that. You know, the stuff people are paying $800 for. Just a modern fougere. This is stunning stuff. Um, it's green. The, the lavender here is the absolute version, which makes it more resinous. It's mixed with resins too. So you get fir balsams and, um, spicy geranium, spicy old school carnation. I mean, it feels like it's an eighties fougere. It's fantastic though. The quality is through the roof. All right, next a vintage bottle of Agua Brava. Now, this is created by Rosen du Matou, rest in peace, uh, and Marcel Carls. And this is lavender, sage, juniper. Oh, man, this is so classy. Um, real wood cap still on, on this one, on the vintage bottle. Uh, but the base is carnation and leather and oak moss. It's, it's beautiful. Okay, now, a house that does not get enough love in either you know, in the vintage community. Um, this is Francesco Smalto for home. And um, Smalto for home is this amazing smoky oak moss. So the top is anise and lavender with tarragon. Again, winning combo. Uh, the heart is carnation and geranium patchouli. The base is oak moss and leather, but like this smoky leather, you know, smoky oak moss. Um, so Italian, so classy. They also came out with this, Malto Smalto. Uh, and Malto Smalto came out in the 90s. So this came out in 87. This came out in 92. And if you like that lavender sandalwood combo, which I'm pretty sure is used here in Very Valentino, I showed you earlier, um, the lavender and sandalwood combination here is stunning. One of the best. It's so beautiful. It's so absolutely well done. The spices from that uh, spicy geranium and the freshness of the lemon with the lavender and the, and the sandalwood. I mean, this is posh. Posh stuff. Um, okay. Next. Um... We are going to go to the house of uh, Jean Patou, and this is Ma Liberté. Now, a uh, very underrated fragrance. Uh, if you like stuff like um, if you like stuff like Patou Pour Homme Privé, check this out. This is heliotrope with lavender, nutmeg, clove, um, vanilla, sandalwood. Yes. Uh, Cinnamon, Jean Carlio classic. Uh, you cannot go wrong there. Okay, speaking of modern fougeres, this is Linsaumis. Now, Linsaumis is um, rum with that fougere DNA. This is a very underrated fragrance, um, especially if you understand the fougere DNA. They've added the rum to make it more modern, but underneath it is a beautiful fougere. You know, with the um, moss, the lavender, clary sage. It's a little bit peppery. Stunning. If you want a modern fougere at a good price, check out Linsalmus. And then, of course, everyone's favorite fougere. It's not my favorite. Um, uh, spicy, woody. I think it's Luca Turin's favorite. It's Invasion Barbar. Uh, barbershop fragrance. This is a barbershop. Lavender with violet leaf, white thyme, bourbon vanilla, and patchouli. Very classy but a little bit boring, very smooth, very, very smooth. And then, if you like that fragrance, I would point you to check this out. 
This is 1725 by the House of Histoires de Parfum. It's very close to um, Invasion Barbar. It doesn't have that um, violet leaf, you know, you know, a little bit of that violet leaf like you're, like, uh, you know, you're smelling gasoline. Um, this is more powdery though, and it has more anise. So lavender anise, and there's this almond note in the dry down, but somehow it goes more powdery, but it's still a great fragrance. This is a, this is a, um, Invasion Barbar, and this would go head to head. Okay, next we're going to go to the house of Azaro, and this is Azaro Porom, one of the best fougeres ever created, especially with the um, sticker version, if you can find it, Gerard Anthony, classic, oh god, anise and lavender, anise and lavender with that fougere base, um, just stunning, stunning stuff. Um, and then I would say Oscar de la Renta Pour Louis is, has to make the list because it also has that anise lavender. It reminds me a little bit more of Santos, uh, de Cartier. Oh, it's so classy, man. It's just, oh, this is so good. You know, the lavender in the top with the spicy carnation and geranium, um, there's a base of labdanum and, and leather, so it has some heft to it. Just a stunning fragrance. Okay, next we're going to go to a fragrance I haven't talked about much, but I, I'll try to. I'll try to wear it more and talk about it. It's called uh, Anthracite Pour Lhomme by the house of um, Giacomo. And this is their take. This is a very strange fragrance because it has weird notes in it, like sweet corn. But uh, it's, it's basically lavender, cyclamen, carnation, moss, sandalwood, cedar, stuff like that. Um, it's, it's, I'll, I'll show you kind of what it is close to or what it resembles, but this is a good fragrance. I enjoy this. I don't love it. I think Giacomo de Giacomo in the vintage blue writing is my favorite from the house, but beautiful lavender note here. And then we're getting down to the end. Uh, Charles Jordan Porom. Un Ohm, sorry. Charles, Charles Jordan Un Ohm is the official name. Somebody, I can't remember who, said that they prefer this, um, they prefer this to, um, Patu Por Ohm. Who was that? JJ. JJ said that. He said he prefers this to Patu Por Ohm. And I understand what he's saying. I... I feel somewhat similar about Dunhill Blend 30. Um, and that's the thing about these vintages is sometimes you can come across a fragrance where it isn't hype, but it's just as good as one that is, you know? Uh, okay, next is going to be Zarius from the house of Givenchy. This is the vintage, and um, this is a classic clean fougere. Lavender, rose, mace, violet, jasmine. I mean, it's beautiful. Kumarin. Um, uh, geranium, of course. Spicy geranium is a must in a fougere. Um, and there is some oak moss and leather, but it's not as heavy as some of the others we talked about. Okay, next we're going to go to Carolina Herrera. C.H. Herrera for men. And this fragrance, if you know... Um, yeah, I mean, if you know stuff like... Uh, Dolce and Gabbana Pour Homme from 94. This came out in 91, and it has that similar fresh lavender, neroli, you know, citruses um, with tobacco. And that's kind of what, that's the um, Dolce and Gabbana, which came out in 94, which I thought was completely unique. I think this influenced it, to be honest with you. Um, and I think I heard Rich Mitch say the same thing, so we are on the same page there. Okay, next is going to be New York Intense which I think this is uh, Patricia de Nicolai's best work. I love this stuff. It's so classy with the Petit Grand, the uh, Bergamot. Um, there's some animal. There's lavender and chamomile clove in the heart with oak moss, tonka bean. Yeah, I mean, that animalic, there's some sort of like uh, castorium civet combo here that just does it for me. It keeps me very interested. I love the dry down. I think I like the dry down more than even the opening. 
uh, and the opening is very nice. But uh, I wish I'd have had more than a 30 mil. I wish I would have bought more than a 30 mil. Um, see if I can get this back in the sleeve, man. Go back to your home. Okay. All right. Next, we're going to talk about a newer um, acquisition, which I actually wore within the last month or so. Via Porom. Uh, Parfums Vial. I talked a little bit about it. It's lavender with spices, uh, mugwort, leather, moss. If you like spices, if you like the way Terry Vassar did spices in the Derby reformulation, check this out. This is fantastic. Masculine perfume. Um, and then a couple more. Next is going to be Bois du Portugal. Bois du Portugal, um, oh man, I mean, uh, if this is a pure Bordon, and I'm pretty sure it is, um, this is so classy. I mean, it's so posh. It's, it's compared to one of the Lalique's, the Lion, I can't remember, but this is superior to me. And this is a 2018 bottle, and I actually got lucky. They did a good job on this one. Um, lavender with sandalwood, uh, ambergris in the base. You know, it's just amazing. Um, and then I have to show you guys this because it's probably one of my favorite examples of lavender done in modern perfumery. This is Creed Viking from 2017. Not the Viking cologne, which I think is shit. Uh, this is uh, pepper, rose, Bulgarian rose with provincial lavender absolute. And um, some people say it was lavendin which is supposed to be not as harsh, not as herbal, more floral. Um, and I, I, I could totally see that. Beautiful sandalwood, beautiful ambergris feel in the dry down of this. I think, now I have a 2017 batch, which is the year it came out. 17U01 is my batch number. Um, and... I hear the later batches have been badly watered down. So if you're going to get Viking, try to get a 17 or 18 batch would be my recommendation. Okay, last fragrance. We'll keep it under an hour and a half. This is Amouage Bracken Man. Uh, one of my favorite fougeres of all time. I love the clove combo. Yeah, I love the clove um, lavender Provincial lavender, nutmeg, clove, geranium, patchouli, musk, a fantastic modern fougere. So, long video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Very much uh, appreciate um, everyone's feedback and support and all that good stuff. You know, I do this for you guys. Uh, I hope you get something out of this. I hope you can see the connections and, um, you know, the... Um, I, hope you, I hope talking about these notes is an interesting way to kind of bring up different fragrances for you. Um, so tell me what your favorites are in the comments. I love seeing your faces in the comments. Uh, likes, subscriptions, of course, always help the channel, but of course I'm not gonna ask for it. It's up to you guys. Um, and, uh, you know, glad to uh, glad to get to keep doing these. It's a, it's a privilege, it's a pleasure to get to talk shop, talk fragrances with you guys. Um, and so if you have any uh, favorites, or ideas for videos even, throw them in the comments. I'm starting to, uh, we're getting very close to the end of my list. You know, my list of ideas is beginning to run low. So we're knocking out a lot of our this year in perfume. This is not a top 10, all that good stuff. Uh, perfumers portfolios are starting to get thin. So I'm going to start doing some different videos. I'm going to start ranking these one day because uh, these are unranked right now, but that'll be for much later. So anyways, Appreciate everyone watching, guys. Cheers. See you again tomorrow with another video. Bye now.